Are we in China? Or Russia? Well, I'll give you a clue. You may know this place as the city of ice, but it's also the city of wind, hang food, oh my God. and a hell of a lot of fun. Coming to Harbin a couple of months before winter descended, I didn't know what to expect. But hey, low expectations usually make for great experiences. There's Russian signs, there's Russian food. So together, let's jump into the unknown and discover what makes this quaint city in the north of China so gosh darn irresistible, whatever the weather. What is your first impression? I'll be honest, Nico, I am a little bit confused. I don't know why you've brought me here when it's not winter, because in my understanding, the only thing to do here is go to the ice festival. So explain yourself, girl. Well, you and many other people, I know a lot of you out there will be telling me it's the wrong time of year, but you know, we don't like to do things by the book. So we are here in Harbin only for a day, and I'm gonna change your mind. I'm gonna show you some things that you can do in Harbin when it's not freezing cold. Let's go. First, I think we need some street food. Bread, potatoes, a bit of spice. You know me too well. That sounds like my kind of breakfast. Oh my gosh, this looks so amazing. I'm so down for all these potato wraps that seem to be popular up here in the north. Oh, whoa. Oh my god. Mm. I've got like a bit of onion in as well. Man, that is so tasty. Like, really good. But a chunky ass wrap ain't the kind of fuel Jack needs to kickstart his engine. So, whilst I love starting my day with a fancy, freshly ground coffee, when you're traveling in China, especially in smaller cities, you do have to be pragmatic. But that being said, there is one savior that always comes in clutch. Look it! The only problem we're looking though, missus, is there's nowhere to sit inside, is there? Don't worry, I got you. I know just the place and it's just around the corner. <laughs> what a view. I honestly couldn't think of a better place to drink my morning coffee. Oh, it's hot. So, wifey, now that you're adequately caffeinated, would you care to explain what on earth we are doing in Russia? <laughs> okay, it may look like we're in Russia, but we are definitely still in Harbin. This is St. Sophia's Church, and it actually was a Russian Orthodox church, so that's why it looks like we're in Russia right now. It's actually been changed into a museum, and it is one of the highlights of places to visit here in Harbin. And look guys, I know what you're thinking, Russian architecture all the way over here in the far east of China, what is going on? Well guys, let me explain a little bit. So before the Russians were here, Harbin was little more than a small village. In fact, this whole area was super, super rural. But basically the Russians were building a railway down the eastern side of China to help link the Trans-Siberian Railway with their colonies like Dalian and Lushan. Naturally, all of the Russian engineers and railway workers needed somewhere to live. And to cut a very long story short, so now we have Harbin. Thanks for the History Corner, Jack. I'm pretty sure there is a lot more to that story and no doubt it ain't all pretty. But I guess at least we can be thankful the Russians left behind such magnificent architecture. Hey Siri, how do you say this architecture is magnificent in Russian? In Russian, это архитектура великолепная. Hear that guys? This architecture is magnificent. Now I've never been to Russia myself, but coming here, I've got to say, these guys sure know how to make a pretty building, don't they? And look guys, whilst I was away getting some buttery smooth gimbal shots and doing my little history corner, poor old little Nico has fallen fast asleep. Should we go wake her up? Oi, wife You just took so long with your bloody history corner, you bored me to sleep. Oh, bored you to sleep? You're not into the history, are you? Well, I guess I'll be taking, returning this little present I got you back to the vendor. No, if you don't want it, if you don't want it, she don't deserve it, guys, does she? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, it's so cute. I'm not sure you guys realise how long and time-consuming it is making videos sometimes. Jack has honestly been gone for a, <laughs> the best part of an hour whilst I've just been sat here. It has been lovely because I've been people watching, but 
I'm starving again now. It's basically lunchtime, so I think we need to go find some food. Thankfully, in China, you're never more than a stone's throw away from a tasty meal. So just opposite the church, we found this amazing street food market. I can see hot food, cold food, sweet food, savory food, basically any food you can find here. It looks so good. So the big question is, Jack, what are we going to get? There's a queue over here. Should we see what everyone's queuing for? See if it's worth queuing? So it looks like some deep fried thing with stuff inside. You get quite a lot. I think that might be a bit heavy for me right now. So I think we'll give this one a miss. Just spotted what you're going to want, Jack. Cheeky Liang Pi. Can't go anywhere without this guy wanting Liang Pi. Liang Pi is such a popular dish all over China. And pretty much every single city has its own version. But the big problem is, outside of summer, most of China, they stop serving it because they don't want to eat cold food. But here in Dongbei, people are hard as nails. and They do not care. They will eat Liang Pi no matter how hot or cold it is outside. You know what? I'm all here for it. Ni hao, we want one for you. We want one for you. Huh? One for you. local Dongbei food. It's very hard to understand. Do you want to eat anything? You can eat, but you don't want to eat too I'm a happy guy. Oh man, this shop is so satisfying. So many condiments to look at. Here's another queue. I wonder what we're queuing for this time. Cupcakes, if you get them hot, they are pretty tasty, but I don't want to wait for them today. Yeah, I don't want my Liam P to get warm. <laughs> We've got to try at least one of the snacks that everyone is queuing up for. Oh, yeah, you got jugger, you got jugger. Uh, yeah, Let's hope they're worth the wait. My man's on a cheeky little live stream thing. <laughs> Looks like we've got another queue on our hands. Let's have a look. Oh, it's like crackling or something. Allow it. Want to get a little bit of liang tai? A tree, Indian. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Ah. I a cola. 22 for I think we've probably got enough now, Nico. Let's go eat that. Yeah. Oh, I was just like, you try something. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is what? Oh, it's these little like veggie fritters that they make. I used to always buy these in the market, tear them up and add them to my Liang Pi. So good. They were really good, but I think we've definitely got enough. Mm. That is good. Liang Pi. My man insisted we try this, which is some sort of deep fried tofu, I think. Mm. In a sticky and spicy sauce. Oh, you're gonna like that, Nico. Oh, oh. Sweet and smoky. Sweet, smoky. I expected it to be softer, but it's not, it's quite hard. Mmm, oh god. But of course, the main event is we've got the neural bing off. Three different types of what we believe all to be neural bing. Which one is gonna reign supreme, Nico? I know that this is definitely neural bing. I watched her make it. Now these ones said they were neural bing, but everybody was still waiting on something. So I've got a sneaky suspicion that they have something different inside. Oh, wow. Punch on the outside. The pastry is a bit soft in the middle. It's like basically like a burger. Oh, so this one's empty inside. No meat in there. <laughs> it's like sweet, but it's not got a flavor. Okay, so nothing in this one either. Why were people queuing for this? I guess they were queuing for the one that we couldn't be asked to wait for. <laughs> oh, that's good though. It's basically bread. A good dip in the MP. Mm. After consuming so many calories, we need a long walk. Unfortunately, I know just the street. But first... Wow, look at this blue building. I thought this might be a nice place to go down. Uh, I would say that's green. It's definitely not green. Maybe like the egg. What do you guys reckon? Blue or green? Okay, well this is definitely blue. I don't know, I think that looks more like red to me. <laughs> well, one thing that we can definitely both agree on is that this street is amazing. Hey, look at your little outfit. So this is Zhongyang Dajie. Now, I read that this is the longest pedestrian street in all of China. Whoa. 
But I also read this isn't even the longest street in Harbin, so I'm not entirely sure which is true. If you guys know, leave a comment below and help me get to the bottom of this fake news. Longest street, second longest street or fifth longest street? I don't think it matters because either way, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? And it also seems to have a hell of a lot of Russian influence. Yeah, there's Russian signs, there's Russian food, there's Russian bread, Russian architecture, lots of things Russian on this street. Yo, you say. <laughs> and of course, I couldn't resist the opportunity to engage in a spot of retail therapy myself. So I've seen this chocolate everywhere in Dongbei and I've been dying to try it because I've heard it's quite a popular chocolate here. It's imported from Russia. It's got this like kind of weird baby logo on it. Let's see if it's any good. Um, I mean, it's no Cadbury's, let's put it that way. But quite a distinct flavor. I'm not sure if I would, um, buy it all the time. So look, I'll be honest here, shopping streets, pedestrian streets, look, it ain't my thing. And so I like to let Nico go off, explore some of the generic shopping opportunities. And meanwhile, I'll engage in a spot of people watching. And I've got to tell you, there is no better place in Dongbei for a spot of people watching. People here definitely have their own vibe, their own style. I'd say that people dress in like quite a brash and loud way. You know what? I'm all here for it. It's making me think, maybe it's time for me to switch up my garments. Maybe it's time for me to start dressing a little bit of a Dongbei fun girl. Hmm, Jack, I'm not sure you could quite pull off the Dongbei look. So what I've noticed about Dongbei is it's quite loud everywhere. There's always music blasting out from all directions, and this street is no exception. Loud clothes, loud fashion, tasty food. Harbin is definitely a feast for all the senses, and this street is certainly no exception. There is so much to see, but we need to get a wriggle on. So look guys, I'm sure there's a load of you at home who are thinking, wow, doesn't Harbin look nice? I'd really like to go there. But you know what? I'm a bit worried about going there. What if I get confused? Forget where I am. Am I in China? Am I in Russia? Well, you'll be glad to know that there are plenty of Chinese flags still, just to remind you, so you won't get confused. Um, thanks for the contribution, Jack. Stop! <laughs> it's the end of the line. I know you're sad about the pedestrian street coming to an end, but Good. I've got a little treat for you. Oh, what's that? I'm gonna buy my man an ice cream. Ooh, exciting. So this is a famous ice cream here in Harbin, and it dates back over 110 years, back to the Qing dynasty. Ooh, historic. This year. Now I know what you're thinking. This is obviously a thing that you only do in summer. Well, not in Harbin. It's quite popular to have this ice treat even when it's minus 30 outside. So I went for the original flavor because you gotta go old school. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, very milky. It reminds me of a mini milk back in the UK. Do you have ever had a mini, mini milk? That's what this tastes like. That is wonderfully average. It's actually not very good, is it? <laughs> I think it's nice. I like a mini milk. Most overrated ice cream in China. You heard it here first. Oh no, my day has just gone from bad to worse. I have just spotted something utterly terrifying. Nico, what is that? That's where we're going next. Sounds ominous, eh? <laughs> So you might think, when it's not winter, what can you even do here? Well, apparently quite a lot still. You can go on a boat, you can watch everyone on a boat, you can go on a gondola to the Sun Island. There's loads to do. You should still come to Harbin, even when it's not freezing. Are we really going to go on the gondola? Yeah, do you not want to? You love skiing. I thought you'd love going on a gondola. All right, we can go investigate. I'll give you that much. I think Jack's hoping that by the time I walk through the park, I will have changed my mind. But this park is getting me pumped. Who needs a nightclub in China when you can just head to your local park for a rave? Many times I've seen on the internet the phrase Dongbei can't be f with. <laughs> and now I finally understand what it means. Me. Well, Mrs. Looks like we've gone from Russia to Disneyland. 
Yeah, this is quite an interesting building that the gondola lives in. So it says it's 50 one way and 80 return. It's quite pricey though, isn't it? I think that's a little bit too expensive for us, isn't it? But I do not want you to miss out. I'd feel terrible. So I'll happily pay for you to uh, go across and back again if you want, and I'll sit one out, take one for the team. You're just scared, isn't it? Why don't I fly the drone instead? That's the poor man's gondola, as I always say. So how was your flight then? Oh my god, absolutely stunning. What a beautiful city this is. I just wish we had a little bit longer to explore. We didn't have to rush off to our next destination tomorrow. I know, but I feel like we're still seeing quite a lot. Even though it's not winter, guys, there's still loads to see here in Harbin. But like you said, we do have to rush off. We're going somewhere else. Can you guess where it is, guys? Leave a comment below. See you next time. Bye.